Hello, and welcome again to English 2322 British Literature for the fall of 2013. Now that you have completed your orientation, it is time to begin the course. This lecture is designed to help you understand how the course works, how to use different course components such as the website, the internet website, litliberallearning.com, the eCampus website, study guides, and other ungraded parts of the course, journals, and discussion boards. You have a great deal of freedom as an online student about when and where you take the course. But with freedom comes responsibility. It is tempting to try to squeeze the course into other activities. But just as you don't babysit your children, send texts, cook dinner, or watch TV or surf the internet while you're in a face-to-face -face class, you should discipline yourself to prepare mentally each time you participate in class activities. For this lecture, you'll need 30 to 40 minutes of uninterrupted time. You'll need to be in a quiet place that is free of distractions. I prefer a desk or a table be available to you because you can put your computer there if it's a laptop and you can place your materials there and you can write easily. You want to be in a mode where you can concentrate and focus during this time. Not have an appointment that you have to get to in 45 minutes, for example. You need to have a calm and positive mood every time you think about taking anything to do with this course. And during the course of this lecture, if you need to take a break, just pause it. Finally, have a paper and pen ready to write down questions if you have them. To prepare for the class, as you would any other class, you have your class materials. For this course, you're going to need a computer because it is online. You also will want to access eCampus, the eCampus homepage and log in, and uh, you will need to pull up litliberallearning.com. You need to keep both of these pages, these websites, minimized unless I ask you to maximize them and look at them for something. You're going to be downloading initially from both sites. Uh, also, you want to make sure that you don't use a phone or an iPad because you're not going to be able to do what you want to do on those devices. Okay, the first thing you want to do is go to eCampus and log in to our home page. The most updated course schedule for the course will always be at the eCampus website. It's a good idea to download it from the eCampus uh, website in case for some reason changes have been delayed on your internet website. I also always send you a copy of the course schedule directly to your email. So you log on to eCampus, you select our course English 2322 and from the left hand menu you choose course schedule. You're going to click on it and I suggest that for all our course materials you create a desktop folder on your computer and name it E2322 FA13 uh, FA13 for fall 13. Um, then you're going to download your course schedule PDF and save it in that folder. I want you to print though only the first two pages of the study guide, excuse me, of the course schedule. Now minimize the eCampus homepage and go to litliberallearning.com. You're going to select from that uh, website your course English 2322 and then select study guides on the menu and then select Beowulf. You want to select Beowulf and download it and print it. Now go back to the study guide and you're ready to uh, take a look at the course schedule. It says for week one, reading number one, Beowulf. It tells you to locate Norton topics online and it tells you to look at some lectures on the litliberallearning.com menu. So here's the study guide. 
this is the way the study guide looks. So after you've downloaded it, you're going to see that there are learning activities. You're going to download this file and save it. And you're going to see there's a section for learning activities and there's a section for the actual study guide itself that has questions on it and vocabulary. So the first section of the study guide includes a list of learning activities and online activities for you to complete. Please note, do not complete the journals according to the study guide instructions. You want to look at the journal guidelines that are posted on eCampus or emailed to you because I have made changes in the journals. For example, last semester students had to write 10 of 12 journals. This semester it's 8 of 12 journals. So when you look at the study guide journal information, always go to your uh, the journal that I've posted on eCampus or the one that I've emailed you. To verify what journals you're supposed to do. Also, all your journals are posted on your course schedule. These online activities, Norton Topics Online, um, these aren't optional. You do need to do them. Optional is to read the side-by-side -side translation that is on My Literature Lab. Uh, you don't have to read that translation. You can simply just read it from the book. Um, optional, listen to an audio tape version. You can find those online by simply Googling um, Beowulf audio tapes. The bottom section of the study guide is very important. It includes your vocabulary and study questions. And this is not the entire thing. There are more than six study questions for this. Before you begin reading, you always want to preview these questions and when you read, you want to have the questions handy so you can jot down notes. Okay, again, so you're going to go to Norton Topics Online, which is a button on your internet website at litliberallearning.com. It's also located on eCampus. After you've selected it, then you're going to look at the top menu and you go and choose Middle Ages. It's in the lower left hand corner of the first page of the website. You click on Middle Ages and up will pop the introductory lecture or reading that you need to do. You can scroll down and take a look at it. It's not very, very long and later on, not now, later on you come back and you read the introduction. Right now, let's keep going. You might want to bookmark it on your computer so you can easily find it. The next thing you want to do is look, take a look at the PowerPoint lecture on Beowulf. So you pop the lectures button on your uh, litliberallearning.com menu. And then you're going to choose Beowulf and open it. If you want to save it, you may, but you don't have to. And you begin viewing the Beowulf lecture on style and structure. It may repeat some of the things you have read in the book, Introduction to Beowulf, or online in uh, Norton Topics Online, but repetition is a good thing. It's essential to learning. You'll notice that sometimes some of your vocabulary terms will be defined. For example, scops, which is one of your vocabulary terms, is defined on this lecture. So you want to go have your vocabulary, your study guide handy, so you can write that definition down when you see it. Now you want to go back to Norton Topics Online because you have another reading during week one, which is the linguistic and literary context of Beowulf. So you're going to go back to this page, but this time you're going to need to click on Middle Ages twice, not once, uh, because you won't, it won't come up otherwise. And you scroll down and you choose the linguistic and literary context of Beowulf and you read it. You can scroll down the page. You'll see that it's not very long, but we're going to move on right now. You can bookmark it. 
When you've completed these introductory activities, you'll be ready to begin reading. It's very important to complete introductory activities because Beowulf is not a text that's familiar to modern day readers and you need to know the context for it. You don't want to stop and read now, but remember that when you read, you will want to choose a quiet time and place to do your reading. Turn off your phone, turn off your TV, close your computer, unless you're reading Beowulf online. I don't really recommend that you do that though for two reasons. For one, it's not going to be the same as our translation in the book, which is a very, very good translation. And two, there's lots of distractions on the internet. So it's best to purchase and use the assigned anthology for this course. Now, in addition to the side-by-side -side version of the text that you can access on my literature lab, there's also a really nice English language version of the test under external links on your website. You can take a look at that. Here's what the facing page looks like. Um, it's a very interesting website and you click on the first button at the bottom and up will pop the prologue in modern English. So it's a good idea to take a look at this, but it's not, it is definitely not uh, a substitute for your reading of the translation in the book. Now let's talk about discussion board, a very important part of the course. It allows you to engage with other students and with me. So I really uh, hope that you will take it seriously and participate. It is 20% of your grade and it is required for you to pass the course. The first thing you wanna do is go back to the discussion board tutorials if you are someone who is not familiar with it. Now, if you've done discussion board before, there's no need for you to take the tutorials, but if you haven't done it, or if it's been a long time, then you want to go to the facing page. This is the page before you log in, click on eCampus tutorials, and then choose viewing and posting on a discussion board forum. That was on your orientation. And go ahead and take the time before you participate in discussion board to review how to view and post forums. It's only five minutes, so you can look at it more than once, but if you still are confused, you're going to want to call the help desk. That's what they're for. I will email you discussion board directions. So the first thing you want to do is to read those directions carefully. And then if you want to respond in a Word file, you can always do that and then cut and paste it into the forum if that's the way you'd like to participate. It gives you a chance to edit, which is a good idea. You always have to select Discussion Board from eCampus. It is not available anywhere else. So you have to log into eCampus, get on our homepage, and select the Discussion Board button in order to participate. Okay, my literature lab is not optional. Some of the activities are optional, but you do have to purchase my literature lab for the course. You will be doing things in my literature lab that are required ungraded things. However, uh, in the first week, you have some optional activities on my literature lab that are under student resources on your home page. So you click on that and then you click on British literature and then you click on Middle Ages and you click on Beowulf. And once you do that, up will pop some activities that you can participate in if you want to. You don't have to. You can choose a quiz, a comprehension quiz. You can look at the discussion questions. You can try them, but these are ungraded activities. These are for your own support and uh, development in the course. Here's an example of what a comprehension question looks like on the um, on this page, and you will be prompted with the answers, so you'll know what the answers are. So that's one reason that's good because some of these um, items may come up on the test. Uh, here's an example of a discussion question, and uh, I may 
sometimes use a discussion question as a discussion board. And this one I'm thinking of using a revision of for your first discussion board. So don't be surprised if you see something familiar to it as a part of your discussion board for the first week, two weeks. Last are the journals, and they are 30% of your grade. They are required. They're very important, a very important part of your course. And But uh, they're so important that before I grade an actual journal for credit, I want you to complete a diagnostic journal so that you can understand how I grade the journals. If I've made changes to the journal and they're not yet on the internet website, once again, I will post it on the eCampus website and I'll email the most current one to you. So always consult that file first. These are the journal guidelines, the general journal guidelines, and uh, you need to read them carefully before you begin any of the journals. Uh, you want to do this in a quiet place, free of distractions, and if you're having any questions, you need to email me and I'll be glad, or call me and I'll be glad to answer those questions. Most important, you must follow directions for form on the journal. It's 12-point font times New Roman. It has to be double-spaced, and there'll be an exception to that. Um, you can see that exception below. The journals must have a header. You have to choose a header, and in the header, you put your name, first and last name. The journal must include the prompt. You're going to cut and paste, not the entire uh, description but just the actual prompt you'll see an example when I send to you send it to you I'll send you an example you need the title prompt the title of the journal that you chose and the prompt is the only thing that gets single spaced and you'll see an example of that when I send it to you very important editing journals must be carefully edited for spelling punctuation grammar and most importantly for sentence completeness and sentence sense. These are minimum standards. If you want your journal to be graded, you have to edit them. Carelessly edited journals will not be graded and you will see no credit for them. So you want to make sure that you follow the format for form. Now you can get up to three points extra credit if your journals follow all the instructions. You will lose point if you do, points if you don't follow these instructions. So here is the diagnostic journal for your first item, for your first journal. It's the diagnostic prompt for your first journal. These are the general directions, so you don't want to cut and paste these. What you're going to cut and paste is where it says assignment. From assignment part one, part two, part three. You cut and paste that and put it at the top of your journal. You do not cut and paste diagnostic journal. You do not cut and paste um, the well you can cut and paste if you want to beginning with Beowulf as an outsider yes you want to continue that you want to paste that sorry you do want to cut and paste starting here with the diagnostic journal prompt all the way through the face but not the above that's going to be on your actual journal here's an example of a journal that I'm going to send you with bubble comments and you won't be able to read the comments unless you're on a computer with Microsoft Office Word a standard version you will not be able to read it in a bootleg version and you will not be able to read it on a phone or probably not on an iPad as well unless it's a PDF okay so here is the these are the guidelines and I've highlighted what you need to pay attention to. So you need to read this very carefully. It's an example of the journal that you'll be completing and follow the directions, especially for form. Okay, we've come to the end of our lecture for week one. And this is the end of the getting starting lecture and the beginning of your course. You may want to bookmark this lecture and review it. But you do want to take your online course as seriously as you would a face-to-face -face course. The same principles for success, discipline, organization, perseverance, apply for success in an online course. Very important to remember is to check your email often for announcements and reminders from me, to stay in contact with me. But most important, 
Don't take time off from the course. Set aside specific times during every week when you will work on the assignments for it. Good luck to you and have a great day.